Hello everybody, uh, my name is Stephen Cook and welcome to my channel. I am going to be doing this spray painting of Taylor Swift, uh, stencil spray painting in real time and uh, hopefully it won't be too boring. Um, I may cut bits like drawing time because that's dull but um, I'm going to try to talk you through what I'm doing while I'm doing it and uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Right, so here is the canvas. It has been sprayed in a yellow. Um, signal yellow and I'm going to just put on the first layer. This first layer is just going to be the shape of the head as you can see there, Taylor's head. Um, if you want to see me cutting these stencils there is a video on my channel. Um, let's get on with it shall we? Need some masking tape. There may be some bits where I'm not speaking when I'm concentrating. If that's the case I'll, I don't know, put in some music. Shall I do that? I'm over here, you can't hear me. Okay, so I'm going to figure out where I want this one first of all. I usually try to use one of the angles to come off of when I'm doing one this small. I think I'm going to use the bottom angle. I'll show you the top angle. No, we're going to use the bottom angle. Yeah, okay, so we're going to use this right angle on the bottom right to bring it all off of. So these are the anchor points. Again, if you want to know about anchor points, there's a video on my channel. But we're going to masking off where the anchor points are going to be. Um, this is just regular masking tape. You can use duct tape, not duct tape, frog tape. Don't use duct tape on it. There's no such thing as duct tape, but duct tape. Anyway, um, there's going to be lots of this meandering talking, I assume. Oh God, I'm going to wear a mask for some of it. So. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me when I put this on. Safety first. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so is that the, let me just check. Nope, this one here is in the wrong position. Just gonna move that one over a bit. Okay, so that's so I can do my anchor points and not mark the color underneath. You don't need to do that if you're gonna paint the color underneath afterwards, which actually I normally do. Um, so like I say, I'm gonna take it off the right angle on the bottom right there. So, now I'm going to weigh it down. Uh, to weigh it down, I have a box of little bits of tile and, um, whoops, little bits of tile and clips, bits of plumbing, some air gun slugs, just little things that weigh a bit. For this bit, you could get away with bits of wood. That bit probably doesn't. Depends what you're painting. If you paint on hardboard, it's much or plywood, it's much easier to get it flat. I don't think I'm going to use that. It's going to be too big. So I'm going to get out my little box of tricks, and we're going to uh, weigh the corners of this stencil down. Shouldn't be too bad. And of course, if if they don't work perfectly, you can always um, can always neaten it up with a brush or something once you finish the painting, which, you know, most people do. Sometimes you just don't see it. Uh, concentrate. The same problem with doing this like this is I need to concentrate and talk at the same time, which is not easy. Where really you fuck up most of the time. Ready? Okay, so I'm just opening the window to get some ventilation. Um, glove. I only ever have a glove on this hand because this is the one that gets covered. Um, and then I can use this here. Is a palette knife, Liquitex one, just to push down the corners. So I'm going to do this now. Let's go, and now I'm going to mark my uh, anchor points as well, which is something I forget to do sometimes. I hope this is going to cover over this yellow nicely. Um, I haven't put my mask on, of course. Um, less is more spray paint. Do it thin layers. Don't go thick, otherwise it'll clog up and make a horrible fucking mess and just go around these edges spray away from the edge so seeing the cards that way that's where the gap is sprayed that way so there's no chance it's going to get under spray meaning that it still will have under spray something that happens all the time really um, unless you stick them down um, i don't do that because it wrecks the stencil and a bit of imperfection sometimes is perfection Right, I'm just going to put my mask on to spray the majority of it. It's on. I don't know if you can hear me. We'll see if we can find out.
bits came off the mask. <laughs> Keep your hand moving, never stop. And get into nice thin layers, multiple thin layers. Your stuff dries so fast, you can allow it to um, to dry and then go back in and get another layer. Um, but do not spray too much. The yank points. Right, I'm just going to give that a few seconds to dry. I'm going to give it a waft with something as well. A card somewhere. Uh, la 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 la. Just dry that out. Then I'm going to do another thin layer on it. Spray paint doesn't necessarily need heat, it will dry with just air, so just doing this will speed up slightly. Um, where's the hairdryer? I'm going to have to go find the hairdryer in a minute. Yeah, I've got a kind of weird little bit there, which isn't too happy with that. It's actually, that's actually an imperfection in the canvas, <laughs> so that's going to stay there. Alright, so then look at it from um, different angles just to make sure you've caught everything which this one looks pretty good all right and that's done and always remember when you finish your spray paint turn it upside down spray it to clean up the nozzle and now we're going to collect up our little knickknacks Okay, taking the mask off just so you can talk more. Normally I wouldn't because it stinks. Um, and then make sure you put pressure take this layer off uh, again pulling this don't pull towards where the uh, I don't I don't know what the word is pull it off like you're pulling off a plaster pull it off gently okay so I'm gonna go this way there we go that is the first layer let me come into camera that is the first layer Nice and sharp, really sharp actually. Nice. Right, I'm gonna dry that and then we'll uh, do the next layer. I'm not gonna show you drying it. Do you really watch paint dry? If you wanna watch paint dry, go and, go and watch Zoella. <laughs> and we're back. And um, my dog's just woken up and wandering on my feet, so that could mess things up, but we'll see. Uh, we are going on now to the um, first layer of the actual painting, I guess. Just gonna get the stencil. So this is the base layer, the one that is the foundations, is why I always refer to it as, as the foundation of the painting. By getting this one on here, we are um, creating what everything builds upon. That doesn't line up very well, does it? Uh, hopefully that won't be a problem. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Um, yeah. So we're going to do this one. This is going to be in grey, blue middle. Um, where's grey, blue middle? 
grey blue middle, Molotov, just a darker grey, so it's sort of stepping up. I usually step up two when you look on the colour chart, step up twice. So just gonna get these lined up with the with the anchor points, which they are, and tape it in place. Um get out of the way. So there we go. Um a bit more difficult when they're the light colour, but also because I've come off the right angle at the bottom of the canvas, it shouldn't be too bad, but sometimes it doesn't quite work out that way. There you go, that one's lined up. See, that's not quite where I thought it'd be. I've got a horrible shadow from the light. Hang on a bit. Right, let's get this right, because as I said, this layer is the most important layer of the lot for me. This isn't one that adds detail or makes it pop, but this is the one that if you mess this one up, you are, you are fucked. Um, I actually did a live event a couple of weeks, ago, a couple of months ago, um, and something just went really wrong with this layer, and I just cut it wrong, and it didn't line up. And this was at a live event, so I had to freehand the whole thing, which was a bit of pressure because uh, I'd lost my lovely safety net. Um, oh, I've noticed there's a little break there, so I've got a little break in this. Um, Stencil. If you notice, he's already been sprayed. That's because I've already filmed this once, but it went wrong. Um, can you believe it? Um, I'd sprayed underneath some stain blocker, uh, which you use in DIY and decorating, um, to block out some old spray paint, and it just meant none of the paint adhered to it. So this actually is the second attempt. Now that cut there, I don't think it's going to matter too much, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Normally, I'd probably go in there with a bit of invisible tape and tape that up but I uh, won't worry about that. The dog is now eating stuff around my feet. So now I've got to get the little trinkets out and get this one weighed down. Oh. Um, when you're weighing them down, especially if you're doing it on canvas, you don't want to weigh it too much because it starts pushing it down and in the end then you get like a curve which means it's absolutely impossible to get everything flat on it. Um, so you need to even out the weights um, if you're doing it on plywood or MDF or something, you don't need to worry about that. Um, but it's definitely easier to spray on MDF or plywood or what have you. Just looking at that one there. And then when you get to these bits, this is when I get out all the little, the little, the little tiny trinkets. So here's some of the uh, the air gun pellets, which actually are not heavy enough in this case. So what I'm going to do is just weigh around it and then I'll use my uh, knife to do the rest of that. Um, there we go, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. And then I've got a few coins here, they're quite handy. And there's the air gun pellets. Get the hair off it. Um, like I say, the air gun pellets are very handy for the ones that are very delicate, but they are not that heavy, so sometimes they do not work like they didn't work over here. These are uh, little ratchet, is it called ratchet? Yeah, are extremely good because they're very thin and got a good weight to them, which is annoying because I've used them for this and I keep doing jobs around the house and I need them. Oh, we're not in line there. Just notice this anchor point is off. There it is, that's where it should be. Just double checking the rest. Yep, they've all come off a bit. I must have slid it by accident. That one's better. That one's off. Or is that the shadow? Okay. Look at this, live, live fixing. I've got a horrible shadow from the light. Okay, that one is okay. That one looked like it was off, but it was a shadow. Okay, right, that's better. Let's just double check now. Everything is okay. One of these is too heavy. That one there is too heavy. It's like lighter there. And then I'm just having a feel to see what's popping up. So that there popped up quite badly. So I shall try to get a couple more bits around there. These you have to do by hand, that you have to do by hand, that one. I don't think I'll try to put a pellet in there, but I don't think it would be enough. Oh no, no, that's okay. Um, 
Can you hear him? He's right beside me, my puppy, Griffin. He's uh, he's chewing up a bit of card. I think a bit of card I was using to dry it off. Little bugger. Um, okay, right, now we're going to spray. This will make Griffin go. He doesn't like the smell of this stuff. It makes him sneeze. Griff, can you go over there a minute, mate? Can you go play with your card? Over there. Yeah. Okay, card there. Okay, so now we need to shake again. Where's the paint? There we go. Um, again, I'm going to use the same nozzle or nib or what do you call them? Cap. Uh, this is the same cap I use for a soft one. I'm going to use this to weigh down a lot when I spray. I do have a thinner one of this, these, and I lost it in the vent. Actually, I'm just going to get one of those tiny ones. That's it. I'm going to use one of these tiny little palette knives. Um, which used to mix paint. Why well, used to mix paint? Uh, I'm using the same cap again, but remember to do your first spray. Oh, it's got a horrible bubble in. That's that maybe by good. Uh, do your first spray away um, because whatever colours in there will be a little bit of in there. This will get left in there. Yep, that's ready. Right, mask on. Okay, here we go. I usually start from the top and come down. Oh, I got Just spraying away from the cut, which obviously isn't possible when you've got multiple cuts. And as you know, this is this is my style. This uh, sort of swoopy things, which actually makes it a bit harder to spray because the um, these um, are big swooping bits of card like that. So you kind of have to draw with the spray paint to go where the where the uh, brush would go if you paint the brush. Again, try not to do too thick. Now I met up the volume when I'm doing this bit. So this is the bit that's more problematic because I've got a couple of bends in it. So what I'm going to do is get my hand in there instead. I'm going to do that. Probably going to have a little bit of overspray there, I think. Sorry, I went quiet. Uh, don't forget your anchor point. Um, I usually stop spraying. This is usually the last anchor point spray I use. Just because it's darker and easier to see. Um, just going to give that a few seconds to start drying and then go to other angles. See if any of your weighing down bits are obscuring anything. So there. That's spraying these I, I, uh, I, uh, eyebrows are uh, not taking enough. So go back in there with a bit more. Not too much though. Um, and then start taking the weight off. By taking the weight off, that means the card come away from the canvas and start pulling it off with the painting. Um, I told you I might go silent when I'm trying to concentrate. Like I say, this layer is so damn important that it's the one I always concentrate on the most. Also, I'm trying not to drop these air gun pellets, slugs, on the floor. Otherwise, a dog will eat them. Okay, then. Turn it off. Right, and then this, then just go get in and just double check by pushing down a bit just to make sure you've got all the areas you need if you haven't a little squirt um that all looks good to me yeah that one looks 
fine. Okay, let's take that off. Oh, my back hurts. I've got this much lower than I'd normally spray, so you get the camera in. I'm quite tall, six foot four, so it hurts. Bending down, hurts. Ah, when you busted. Okay. You don't want to, as you're taking the tape off, you just don't want to smooge it. Smooge it? Pivot. Pivot. Don't pivot it because if you pivot it, it will smudge the paint. Um, right, I'm going to come this way because there's a lot more paint up there. So I'm going to put pressure there, grab there, and pull. And we don't get any smudges. There we go. That is our layer two, which looks pretty darn good. We've got something weird there, a bit of dust. So there is layer two on. That's the base layer, the one that everything's built on. I shall um, get this one drying and be right back. Bye. Okay, so that's all dried out nicely. Um, if you notice here, I've just this is just on a bit of board and a right angle here, just to keep things steady really and they've got some clamps which do come in handy so now we're going to get the darker layer um oh, where is it oh god i'm going mad talking to myself so let's go get it lined up um the um what the hell's that it's got dust all over it hold on I'm just going to clean this off um the uh, you know the 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 more detail the layers, the smaller the cuts, therefore the um, tighter the shapes, therefore much easier to spray. The harder, harder bits to spray, for me, usually are the highlights, especially on this one, because there is a lot of highlights in this painting, because um, it's just mainly T-Swizzle's face, um, and um, uh, there's not a lot of shadow in it. So the, um, the highlight, which you'll see at the end, uh, well, before I do any painting or before I do any black will be white so it's going to be all this bit here, this bit here, this bit here, this area and that is big, vast, open um, sort of what's the word? Big, vast, open islands I guess which means there's a lot more room for mistakes these are nice and easy to spray because they're quite small so then also this won't need as much weighing down because they're, um, well there looks like because they're smaller shapes but we will do that anyway get up the bric-a-brac again and it looks like we need quite a bit up here and there, and there, and there. Um, like I say, you can reuse really anything here to weigh it down. These are these are the compression fittings from plumbing. Um, if you've again seen my videos before, I'm renovating my house, so I've got lots of this. These are handy because like you've got, they, they, they're a good shape. <laughs> anything with a flat on it is quite handy. Um, that's not bad. Um, and then these bits here are just, Smashed up tiles, just ordered tile samples. Uh, then, like I said, we've got the um, socket sets, which are brilliant for just that, I get perfect. Um, and then this is just a tiny little bolt, or a nut, sorry. Um, doesn't need a huge amount of weighing down here, so I'm just going to put very, these are just some S hooks. You want like a variation in weight because sometimes you don't need it quite as heavy. See, there is a bit of bounce there, so I want to push that down, but I don't need, I don't need any weight, because if I put too much weight on, that will push off another bit, and maybe something else inside there. Coins, I'll put some coins in there. That's good, that's good. And I just, just prod it and just see if anything bounces too badly like that. It's horrendous there, that's really bouncing. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, this bounce here is bad, so I'm going to put something in the middle. That, oh, that one's also bad. I think I'm going to have to do that one with my palette knife. That's okay, that's okay. That's okay, they're okay. Oh. So let's get the mask on and let's get this one sprayed. Because, because I've got lots of these going in and out, there's no real way to spray with the cut. So you just got to kind of just wing it. <laughs> Griffin barking. Can you hear that? We'll just go check on the dog. Okay, back. That's some good content. Right, let's get it sprayed. 
just going to start with this bit up here, which is a bit annoying bit. If you want to know about the stencils, watch the video <laughs> of the stencil cut, just search it, Taylor Swift stencil. Because that's probably quite important to all this, but this is just you seeing me do this, which is voyeuristically beautiful, I guess. Because um, we've got much smaller bits, I'm going much slower and holding it with that. 15 centimetres away, 10 centimetres away. I'm just doing light blows, <laughs> sprays. I've got a bit there. There's a bit that's jumped up there, not very good, but I won't worry about that. And spray down into it, not under it. They go there. As I said, I'm not going to bother doing the anchor points on this one. Just going to see if I can get that. Right, there I come. Uh, so now I'm just going to check back over, um, especially where these things are because sometimes they can overlap the line. Not a lot actually. You're going to see more issues with weighing and stuff when I do the final layer because that one is uh, way more difficult. Um, and then we can have the Ravio, the Prestige. Well, not yet, we've still got loads to do. Get rid of the masking tape. If you use um, frog tape, that'll do multiple sticks. So it's really expensive, but it actually does last pretty good. Just double checking, oh, there's a bit there. So I've just seen that, because the light's showing differently. There's a bit there that's not been covered as much as I'd like. So I'm just gonna flop the back in there with this. There we go, that's all it was, just a little bit. Uh, and then again, because there's a lot here, pull the stencil this way. Here we go, ready? Bit of pressure there. And there we have it. Look how those lines have lined up. That's pretty good. Um, we've got a bit over here, but again, I will be sorting that all out once we get to the end with the yellow. But there we have Taylor Swift. All right, now as I was saying, this one is much more delicate, see? And now you can see the little uh, twist or the, the coolness of this painting is a lover. You see it there? So that's the uh, contour of the neck, the highlight of the neck. Spelling out lover. Lover, unless you, if you live in Bristol where I live at the moment, they say it like lover. You know me lover, all right, me lover. They say it like that and uh, so they in Devon, right? They in Devon. <laughs> so do they in Devon. Right, let's get this one lined up. There is a bit of issue here. That I lose there is a message some for of the... Oh, that's my computer talking. Some of these highlights are going over bits of grey. But I'm not going to worry about too much about that. Um, let's get this lined up there. So I'm just going to put those ones there. Just on the edges. Um, that's not bad. There we go, a few more of these guys down. Oops, a little bit big. Got one there, a couple of them up there. Okay, uh, maybe one on that ear. And then we're going to get some paint. We're going to use white. Uh, we're gonna use, oh, signal white. So this one's a bit empty. Um, because I'm spraying downwards, if this was half empty, I could feel it. The paint is there bottom of the pan, yeah, pan, bottom of the can, so it's not going to spray, so I need to get a uh, can with a bit more paint in. Gloves on. I mean, I could have done this all the way around if I wanted those greys to be on top of the sh highlights. The highlights should be, you know, on top. <laughs> <coughs> oh, another burp for you. My pleasure. Let's get the mask on. Oh, and we'll get spraying. Because this is white, it will probably need more than one coat. See, I'm following my curve just to try to 
get it to work in there. Try not to touch touch the canvas with a knife, pilot knife. So I've got kayaks, that's complicated. So let's make sure it makes held down. Now we're gonna wait for that to dry slightly and go back in. Give it another coat. I can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it's not the viscosity of the paint or the opacity of the paint is coming through so the grey is coming through so it's not a thick enough layer yet so I'll have to give that one a bit more white in a minute let's do the writing I could do some more weighing down there that's popping up i just get some of these guys, that's too big I'll put some of these slugs in there just to push that down enough to of that. This idea for air gun pellets came from somebody on my Instagram, I think. Or well, maybe Twitter. Fucking great idea. Okay, that's better. Okay, let's get that in. There's joys in the left, but I might leave that or I'll just join it up with a. Uh, a bit of spray paint on a brush at the end. Right, I'm going to go back in because it's just white. Try to thicken up slightly. But not so much so I'm going to cause like little um, puddles of paint, which can be, which happens sometimes. Be careful. Uh, give that a few seconds to dry. I'll have a relook. The shadow's bad, and um, because I've got the video lighting set up for the video, uh, normally I've got it there and there. Normally I'd have it up here, but obviously it'd be in the way of the camera. Again, just use an air to dry it, opposed to heat. Okay, let's get them off. What a tape tape off. As I fuck it up. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to pull it towards me, and we should have Taylor. Yes, look at that. Lovely. That looks pretty darn good to me. How's it look at the camera? Lovely. Okay, so you can really see the balance now. So once I go into that with black, that will bring out the um, depth. So I'll put it in the eyes, lips, nose, bit in the hair, bit in the ear, and that'll bring it out. I'll go, oh, you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to do it all live. I forgot about that. Okay, so let's now take her over to the easel and get some uh, black on her. She looks good so far. Uh, now we're over on the easel, and um, to be completely honest, put hair in my mouth, um, this is about two weeks later, a week and a half later. Um, I just got waylaid with other paintings that I had to finish off, so now we're going back into Taylor. Um, so initially, I was thinking, add some black to the hair, to the neck, to the eyes, to the mouth, but now I've seen it like this, I don't think I'm going to add quite as much black as I was intending. I'm going to add some black to the eyes and the mouth maybe a touch of the ear, not sure. Um, 
and I might go around the outside of it in black. Again, not sure, or I might just use this dark grey. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to put some more yellow spray paint uh, around these edges here. Um, I'll just do that by spraying some paint into a bottle. But anyway, um, I'll zoom you in and we'll get going, shall we? Woo! So, first off, let's do the eyes. Um, really, all I'm going to do here is kind of go over this darker grey, um, but bring it in a few mil. Trust me, that makes sense. I have my reference photograph of Taylor here. Um, oh, you can't see that, so zoomed in. But let's do the eyes. Uh, I'm just going to do the drawing with a Posca, with a, a paint pen, and then I'm going to um, go back in. Oh, God. This is going to be hard because I'm trying to concentrate. So we've got an eyelash. Let's use one that's a bit smaller. I'm going to draw this in um, the Posca and then I'll go back in with the uh, paint at the end. So eyelash, eyelash, eyelash. I mean, they're just following where the old ones are, really. The old ones where the dark ones are. And then I'm going to bring this brow sort of to there. Um, yep, and then here is roughly where the eyeball and the shadow would be. Um, it'll be flat there because her bottom eyelid will be going over it. Um, and then we're going to have a gap there, which would be where the highlight would be um, the lens flare from the eye oh this is hard to talk and think at the same time, same time. Um, um, da -da -da. yeah that's okay uh, and then we're going to go back over and this is just we'll be following the shape of roughly where this eyelash on the top of the eyelid goes that looks okay and the bottom eyelid I'm going to put a little bit of black just to follow this and these are just some eyelashes um, just to define that but again like I said originally I was going to do more black but a little bit more delicate it's not too bad um, eyelashes are never that equal so don't worry about them being that equal that's okay. Um, up here we've got the eyebrow. I don't think I'm going to touch the eyebrow. I think again I'm going to keep this more minimal. Um, so we're going to go on to the other eye. I'm going to do roughly the same thing on this eye. Uh, we'll start off with the lashes. Um, um, just following the existing dark lashes that the stencil gave me. Um, this bit obviously because this has got a lot more lashes in you are um, Pushing it all together um, here. Um, again, so here we've got the eyeball, but it's sort of going into the shadow of the eye. So I'm just going to be a bit careful. I do this roughly right. Uh, Give us a bit of a hole there. And then this side, we'll do the same. I'm just going to bring this up. It's probably a bit flatter because of the angle um, and the eyeball I'm gonna follow this line here sort of go up in and that's where the ball will be there something like that and this will be going up roughly straight again maybe with a little kink in it not too bad, and then a bit of black would be there. Um, yep, yeah, that's okay. Um, and then the bottom eye as well, we've got this sort of the shape of the eyeball here, the white bit, so this is the contour. So here is sort of where the end of the eye would be, that little bit where you get your eye snot. <laughs> um, and then these ones, again, I'm just gonna put an impression of some darker lashes here and there. Um, like I say, I'm using a paint pen here just to, to doodle um, and then I'll go back over the paint. That's nice actually, nice balance there. Um, 
and I'll fill this in with paint in a second and you'll have to see roughly what I was doing. Um, and now I'm going to go down to the lips and do the same. So I need to move the camera. There we go, camera. There we go. So at the moment you can see these lips are quite bitty um, where I've sprayed it because obviously you've got the islands. What I'm going to do now is, hmm, <laughs> is to think for a second. Right, we're going to add black. So first of all, this is the depth. So I'm not going to put it here because if I darken this bit here, um, this will make this pop out and it won't curve, it will jump. So the curve actually is going to be going from here. <laughs> Excuse me. So first of all, let's figure out where the mouth, the teeth are. So we are kind of here, again, delicately drawing. If you, when you do these type of paints, if you don't want to use paint pens, really don't. I've, I swear, because I mess up quite a bit. Um, so don't use paint pens if you're not that confident with what you're doing. Look at me, it's like a teacher. Fucking idiot. Right, so, um, diddly. So I want this to follow the contour of this lip. So this goes, it'll go up like that. And then it'll go down like that. And this will follow the angle of the open mouth. Probably have a few, uh, so those little creases that you have in your lip. Again, not too many, this is pop art. I don't want to over complicate it. This is going to go right, right to the end of there. And then I'm going to bring this down. Uh, again, this is just an impression here. Um, where should we have it? About there. Um, and then this goes back up for more of an impression. Um, so this, hmm, I want to have some sort of the, the breaks in the lip here to give the impression of the creases. So what I'm doing is just, just being very gentle. And I think we'll have a crease there, crease there, crease there. And some creases in the black there. Um, and then that can follow down there. I might just put a tiny bit of black here, just in the nose. Okay, now I'm gonna get the black paint and we're gonna fill that in. Black paint, <laughs> where is that? Um, let's see what we've got in here. Ivory black, no, we're not using ivory black. I've got some Mars black. I find I've got some Liquitex here. Liquitex Mars black, but I found this stuff when it gets old, it goes really lumpy. No, this one looks right actually. I'm um, just getting a palette. Oh, wrong way. So I'm just mixing in this thing here. But this, can you see it? No, you can't. This paint for some reason goes really gross and sort of lumpy if you haven't used it for a while. Uh, it's annoying because it's really expensive paint as well. Um, I'm not a fan of expensive paint, I'm definitely a fan of the uh, cheaper paint. Um, I'm mixing it here with a palette knife. Just to, this one's not too bad, but it is a bit lumpy. It looks like someone's spat in it. Uh, I'm just adding water to it. You'll see, especially Liquitex, they sell like a, a mediums to mix your paint to make it pour all that crap. Rubbish, don't bother any of that, just use good old water. You never saw any of the masters using a medium. Okay, let's try that. If this paint doesn't really work, I'll um, I'll change it out. Go and see. Uh, I'll actually zoom back in, shouldn't I? Woo! So we'll do the eyes first. Um, got quite a nice tip on this brush. So I'm going to, am I in the way? No. This is difficult to paint and talk and concentrate. It's easy when you do the time lapse because if there's something goes wrong, then just cut it out um, or fix it. But in this, fixing it would be another three or four hours. So I'm just painting these eyelashes very delicately with just a tiny bit of paint. Um, eyelashes are easy to paint with paintbrush because you just put uh, more pressure on it as you go to the bottom of the 
of the lash and it's the same shape as the brush. So that bit is nice and easy. Um, what else can I say? This paint's not too bad, it is a bit gecked up. But, uh, so I'm using Liquitex Heavy Body here, um, but like I said, I wouldn't recommend Liquitex Heavy Body. Um, it's too expensive for what it is. Um, usually PBO or PEBIO is pretty good. Winter and Newton's pretty good. Um, I'd avoid De La Rowling and I'd avoid System 3. I'm not, not a fan of those ones. I accidentally ordered some System 3 the other day and it's horrible stuff. So glossy. Right, just need to concentrate for a second. That looks so at the moment this is not round enough, this needs to be rounded, so I'm gonna add a bit of a curve to that bit. So it actually looks like it's going um down and in. And in fact, may have to do a bit more here as well. There you go. Um sometimes when you're doing this type of stuff, like I was correcting myself that it's not really good to correct while you're doing the actual part. Come back to it later on and see. Correct it once everything's painted in because you'd be surprised how different um, things will look when you've got more paint on them when you've balanced it better. So that's what I'm hoping <laughs> is going to happen here. Um, this paint all these in. Dooby -dooby -doo. I'm going to leave a bit more flare there, I think. And then we're going to go into here. I'll probably add some white at the end just to add some um, like lens flares to her eyes. It's not a huge amount in the photo, which is the reference photo. So there you go. Now I can step back and see what the problem here is. I'd say the first issue is this looks a bit too delicate. So we're going to bring that there, make it heavier. Um, I think these lashes on the bottom need to be heavier. So just a bit more paint in there. The, the Posca paints are, Posca pens are fine for doing this, but um, they don't have the the weight that uh, acrylic has. So I'm looking at it now. I'm thinking these lenses, these lenses, these lashes need to curl up more. That's better. Okay. Um, and then this here needs to be a slightly bigger and a bit heavier. So we'll get that back in because that's also given the uh, contour of that nose as well as going an eyelash. Hmm. So I see the issue is here. This grey here needs not to be there because this is cutting out her eye. So actually what I'm going to do is bring this black down a bit lower and then when I come to do the yellow in the background I will uh, cut, I will go over these bits here. It's just those bits in there, these bits here. Um, it shouldn't be great because they're the part of the face, but they're not actually background. But we'll sort that out later. I'm going to just bring that one down there. Okay, now I'm going to go into the other eye. Hopefully this one shouldn't have any fixing me doing. So I'm going to learn from the last eye and make these eyelashes bigger, heavier and more curly. It's always good to start off delicate, I find, and then make it heavier. Because you can't go the other way. Well, you can go the other way. It takes a long time. Um, what else can I jibber jabber on about? This is difficult. It's easy when I was doing the spray paint. <laughs> Paintbrushes. We'll talk about them. Uh, I would just buy the cheapest paintbrush. Um, Art Discount do some good cheap ones. Um, Major, I think they're called Major paintbrushes. They're pretty good and cheap. Um, for the way I use brushes and the way I treat brushes, I get through quite a lot. So I can't, you know, spending seven quid on a tiny paintbrush is fucking mad. I just don't look after them. It's my fault. I'd leave them in the 
leave them in the water and they go sort of um, hooked, bent. Let's just paint this all in. Do, 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 do. See, now I'm thinking actually this here should come across there. There we go. That's better. Um, right. Um, I don't know what to say. I must be doing quite well. I've been rabbiting on a bit. Um, I'm just going to paint all this in black. So this is the eyeball. But here, again, we're doing the shadow which is creating the eyeball. I'm not actually painting an eyeball. I'm not actually painting, um, you know, the, the roundness eyeball. I'm painting the shadow which is creating the eyeball. Um, so a lot of the shadow as well as being the eyeball is parts of the eye. Um, and those parts of the eye are the, the lid um, and then this corner which is partly makeup, partly shadow of the eyelid above it. Um, and it's all just an impression of where things are casting shadow. This obviously, if you paint in a different style, if you paint photorealism, you, you, you do still do the same thing, but it's not quite as chunky, not quite as... Um, Harsh. See now that's eye looking weird of crap at the moment. I will bring that back. And some diagonals there. Bring that up there. This may be a bit lower actually. We'll come down just a touch with that. And I need to bring in some black there. Let me just stand back. Okay, that light eye is looking pretty good. It's obviously the problem looking at it at the moment is there's not any highlights. But we're not working on highlights at the moment. We're just working on the shadow. Um, and I think we'll bring out this here again, which is a pressure, an impression of either an eyelid or an eyebrow or the makeup. Uh, we're just going to put these eyelashes in. Yeah, that's all right. Right, we're going to go on to the lips. Right, move the camera. Oh, there we go. Mm. Da, 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 da. Um, lips are fun to paint on women, pain in the ass on men. Because I always make them look too voluptuous. <laughs> um, just. Sorry, just concentrating. Um, okay, we'll bring that one across. Just trying to get this shape of this mouth now. Um, without overpowering it, we don't want to overcomplicate it again. I don't want to put gallons of um, these lip folds <laughs> in. And then the shadow from these bottom bits here when I'm going up, I'm jumping up like that with the paintbrush. That is just giving the impression of um, the gaps in her teeth. And then this, so then we're bringing this right around and then we're joining this. So this in theory should make this look much, much more like a mouth. Bringing this down. Um, and then we're gonna cut and get in the, um, these are the, the creases I left, or the, the highlights, which uh, would be the top of the creases. So again, I'm at the top of this lip, I'm adding the creases to the lip by adding the black for the shadow. And down here, I'm adding the black for the shadow and the crease is the highlight. Does that make any sense? It makes sense in my brain, but as I said, I'm not a teacher. Um, if I was a teacher, I would be a very bad one. Um, Um, I painted all comic book stuff at school when I was uh, a GCSE, A levels. Can't remember what I did actually. GCSE, I think I painted a lot of comic book stuff, a lot of Warhammer elders and Space Marines. I was obsessed with those guys. Um, still am a bit obsessed though. Every time I see them, I get really bit excited with the nostalgia of it. I mean, I've made a career on nostalgia, so uh, no reason I haven't. No reason to apologise. Um, let's talk about Taylor. Have we talked about Taylor? 
I do like the new album. I think I've already said that. God, I've been doing this video now. Feels like forever, even though probably in your time, you're on about 40 minutes. You're doing well if you're doing, if you're still here. Congratulations. Um, please tell me your favorite Taylor Swift song down below. <laughs> I think mine probably is, oh, what's that sad one she did? Ronan, that was an amazing song. I love that one. And uh, it's not by her, but the one from the Hunger Games soundtrack. Safe and Sound, I don't think she wrote that one. Um, and of course, Out of the Woods. I love her actually, it's very good. I mean, it does sound a hell of a like um, uh, Mazzy Star, if you know Mazzy Star. But, you know, we live in a postmodern society where everything is riffing on something. Um, look what I'm doing, I'm riffing on Warhol, Banksy, oh, 60s pop art, Taylor Swift. Um, the color scheme is very sort of. 20s, which were inspired at the moment by Miss Maisel and all those type of things. So everything you look at will be referencing something and parodying something or paying homage to something. So never apologise for uh, for uh, referencing. If you think you're doing something super original, then you probably just don't know enough stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm really running out of stuff to talk. That lip looks nice, doesn't it? That looks really good. Um, right, so questions are now. Bring the camera out. So I explain my thinking. Ooh, wrong way, camera. My thinkings now are, do I add anything to the earring? Do I add any black to the hair? <laughs> At the moment, I'm thinking no. I'm thinking I like the balance. I think I will leave it like that. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is pop a bit of white into her eyes and her mouth. Uh, the white I'm gonna use is Whatever I can find. What colour is that? It's black. Piss. I've dropped on the floor. Oh, let me see. I've got any white anywhere. Uh, there's my paint shelf. And there's more over there. Interesting? Probably not. Okay. Oh, here you go. There's blue some white. I've got some white here. Bit of uh, PBO. 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 Oh, no. That's no good. Classic me. That's all turned pink. Where's some white paint? White paint, white paint. There you go, right, I've got some Liquitex. Heavy again. This is actually a newer tub, so this one won't be all gacked up, I don't expect. No, it's not, this one's perfect. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of white to her. Not much. What I'm gonna do is add a bit of white to these eyeballs here to get these more defined. And that one, and then maybe a little bit of highlight in the eye. So let me zoom back in. If I just zoom in so you can see all of them, there we go. So, going to define this. I'm just making sure my paintbrush is cleaned up. So I'm just going to go up and down very lightly. I don't want to add too much texture here because we've already got the um, the colour there from the uh, spray paint. Um, brilliant white in spray paint is not brilliant white when it comes to other paints. It doesn't seem to have as the opposite quite the same. There you go, that looks nice. Maybe bring it under here a touch. Nice, and I'm gonna put a weeny bit of white into her eyelashes, maybe here. Here, um, this is just on that, like, I don't know what you call that, tear duct. Can you see what I did here? Just to give a bit of highlight. And then we're gonna put a bit of white into her actual eye. So the, the um, reflection, the lens flare is there. Lovely, that oh, looks nice. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white over the other side of these lashes here. Just to do the same thing, just a touch, just to add the um, the uh, curve to it. And then I'm just gonna put a bit more white into this bit just to even it all out. Let me just stand back a bit. Nice, and I'm gonna put a little bit of white up into these top eyelashes, just a touch to give the impression. Okay, then we're gonna go to the other eye. We're gonna do exactly the same thing 
with the eyeball. Um, just bring it around the white of the eye, just gently, very, very gently. Probably can do be a bit, a bit bigger. There we go. That look nice. Yeah, I'm having to keep going back in my chair so I can have a decent look. Actually, I might put a touch there as well. Just to add this roundness and then we'll sort that other bit out of the back for the owner there. Okay, and then we've got to put some highlights into the eyes. Um, again, the lens flare, the highlight, the reflection, whatever you want to call it. Just that. Perfect. And then we're going to do the... I'm going to put a few spots on here. Again, the tear duct. I don't know what that's called. I'm calling these things names that they aren't. Just a few dots here and there. Nice, okay, the bottom lip. Do what I put into this. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to these teeth. Just to um, define them slightly more. They've got a touch of overspray on. So we'll do them a little bit, just a little bit, not very much. Looks nice. Um, yeah, that's good. Spray a bit of this colour into a can and then go back in with uh, the extra spray paint. So what I'm going to do is bring the camera away and I shall do that now. And hopefully I'll be able to talk about it, but it might get a bit boring. If that happens, I will just fast forward. Mm. Okay, so I'm taking the spray paint that I used. Oh, I've got a cap and I'm spraying it into the lid. Oh, bloody hell. Hang on. Paint you. Spray into the cap and then we're just going to paint out this bits of grey. I have a special section of brushes which I use for this stuff. Um, which are, because these, this, using spray paint like this absolutely destroys your brushes. So I'm going to try to get in here. Can you see that? Is that on the camera? Yeah, so I'm just getting into here um, where I was saying it's, it's over, gone over where I needed it. Perfect, so that's just, just brought that little bit of eye out. Then we've got a little bit of overspray there. Not overspray, the skinchel. Skinchel, the skinchel. The skinchel's going here. Okay, and I think that's probably it, isn't it? Yep, that's it for the overspray. Um, like I say, I'll give this another coat, but um, you don't need to see that, so I'll come back once I finish doing that. So I've just sprayed some of that spray paint on the plate. Lick my brush so I can get a point on it. Make sure we've got no other colours in it, which we have. We've got that. Kind of has some of that red beside it. It's gone purpley. Ah. Right, I've so sprayed it into the cap. Right, let's try again. So I'm just bringing this white back in. There we go. Okay, that's not too bad. It's not the neatest, but I just need to. Uh, I just need to um, neaten up in a minute. Car, what a mess. What a pain in the ass. Spray paint is not good to paint with. Don't don't paint with it if you can avoid it. There we go. And I just want to put a bit on this bit here where we've got a bit of overspray. This should be easier. And I've got some yellow coming out of it. What the hell? Why have I got yellow coming out of it? There we go. God's sake. Now I've got yellow. This is turning yellow now. Right, I've got to find some super fresh brushes. Let me just find a super fresh brush. There we go, right. There's always some yellow on that brush. Try not to paint in spray paint if you can avoid it. Because now I've made the end of this R yellow. <laughs> it won't be yellow for long, but... Um, just let that dry. Um, I just need to let that dry and then I can come back in and sort that out. 
Well, at least you're seeing the mistakes. Right, I gotta let that dry, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so so that was a minor panic. Um, what had happened there is I'd used the same cap to spray the white paint and the yellow paint, and because yellow is darker than white, <laughs> the uh, there's some yellow in the paint, and it really showed up. So what I've done is cleaned that, got a new nozzle, and heavily cleaned this brush, and now we're back in action, and it's not yellow anymore. Uh, so I'm just I'm just painting over that bit that went a bit yellow. <laughs> Nothing very interesting. We need it there actually. That's good. We I could paint over that line. Should I? Should I? Yes, do it. Let's just let's join this up, shall we? There we go. That looks alright, doesn't it? I uh, will join this all up. This will probably need another slight coat, but again, that is. Snagging, as they call it when you renovate a house. Touching up. Just doing the bits that are barely noticeable unless you get really, really close. Um, this might need a bit more. Oh, no, no, that's not. Probably two coats will do. Two coats of this white. Should cover up those gaps. I'll do the one on the, on the O as well. I think it's a bit, getting a bit dry. You could just do this with white paint. I would probably actually do now wish I did it with white acrylic <laughs> it would have saved me all that panicking did you just see me panic that was about as panicked as I get really there we go that's better um, so yeah I need this to dry a bit more put another coat over it uh, this ear up here also went a bit on the yellow side because of the mishap but again the great thing about spray paint and any sort of oil based paint is it will paint over most things it will hide most mistakes um i will give this lover another coat just to cover up the uh joins um so now looking at it i'm pretty happy with it actually i'm not sure there's too much more i need to fix i'm thinking now should i put a black line around the whole face to sort of play up that stamp look. Or should I just put a line of the dark grey? Do you know what? Maybe I should just leave it alone. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's I think that's done. I'll be back showing you the finished painting. I've had the painting sitting in the studio and I was actually even editing this video and there was something bugging me about it and I wasn't happy so we're back and we're doing this again. Um, I promise this video will be over at some point. Sorry, my hair's very fluffy. Uh, what's the problem? Shadow. Uh, this is the biggest issue here. The shadow under the chin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this and then I'm not doing any more because it's ridiculous. I'm going to outline black all around her head to make her stand out from the back. I'm going to add a good lump of shadow there. So let's do that. I'm going to bring the shadow up to here. So we're going to go, sorry, I've got my reference photograph there. So I'm just trying to figure out where I want it. I think we're going to go here, leave some of that gray in, go up to about there. And then we'll curve in there. Yeah, that's better. Um, and now I'm going to put a black line around it all. I think I'm going to use that really tiny Posca pen. Let's try it. So these, these are the very tiny ones. This is called a uh, one, because only one mil. Can you see it? Can you see it? There you go, right. So I'm going to see if this works. If not, I will go to a slightly thicker one. I only want this line to be really, really thin. Yeah, this should work. I'm just, all I'm doing really is following my line that I've already got. Um, and holding my breath. Oh my God, I hold my breath a lot when I do this. Makes talking hard. So it's just a very, very thin line. I'm following the contours. 
of the face that I've already put in, so the cheeks. I'm trying to do this all in one line so I don't get the ink breaking, which I failed to do already. Wow, this is hard to do when talking. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this needs slightly thickening up, um, and then we'll go around the, the bit of the lip there. And then we'll carry on round. I'm going to do this in this thin one first, and then if I'm not happy with it, I'll thicken it up. But I think this probably will be perfect. Um, go around the bottom here. Uh, when you're doing things like this, always keep your body moving. Keep the canvas moving if you need to. Um, these Posca pens don't like being gone over um, themselves if you've already, if they're not fully dry. Sorry, my hair's horrible. I've got like this really super side part. Let me just sort this out. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Right, anyway, let's get on with this. Um, yeah, so let's do this line. Um, there we go. That would have been fine if the canvas was lower. And I bet my head's right in the way, isn't it? Wow, that's just up. These Posca pens are ink in them, uh, sort of paint pens. Uh, there are quite a few brands of these, Molotov, Liquitex, uh, Montana, they all do their own ones. I prefer the Poscas and the Molotovs. They are very good because the ink in them is a very good quality um, and you can bypass a paintbrush now and again. Um, the ink dries very, very fast, therefore it's quite handy. Um, I'm trying to wonder if I should bring, I might bring a tiny bit of black into this earring just to define it out a bit. And we're just going to paint this bit in here just to define it. This brush is a bit knackered. Um, I can't remember where I left it before when I thought it was finished. I remember saying, okay, that's it done, this painting. I remember I was having trouble with the uh, spray paint because I was, um, uh, I think I was getting the paint, uh, the, oh, I can't speak properly. The, um, I wasn't cleaning out the cap. I was using the same cap. I should have done that. Um, so this painting, of Taylor Swift is, let's think, what would they use? So we've used a stencil, so it's very mixed medium. We've used stencil, we've used drawing, we've used spray paint, we've used acrylic, we've used ink, which is in the pens. So it's, it's uh, spray, acrylic and ink on canvas. Multimedia? Yeah. Just gonna bring this line up here a bit. There you go, that's good. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? That angle there. So here I need more of this chin ink it needs to come here. The shadow line obviously would follow the chin. <laughs> it wouldn't follow um the neck. Um I think it might even bring it up a bit. There we go. That's better. Um yeah, so mixed media. Of course you didn't, you wouldn't need to use the stencils on doing this type of painting. Um, I like using the stencils um, because you get a unique look, I think. Um, that looks much, much better. Um, the ear, I'm wondering if I should add any shadow to the ear. I think I'm gonna add a bit of shadow to the ear. Are we still in focus? Uh, not in focus, in frame. Yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take a a fatter Posca, oh, not that fat. That one there, and I'm just gonna put a bit of shadow in this part of the ear. Because this ear's looking a bit flat. Flat, flat. Um, and maybe, oh, I don't know if I should put a bit up there or not. I don't really wanna to add too much black. Um, I want this painting to be about 
her face. Maybe here, we'll put a line here. Whoa, damn it, that fell. Just a curve there. If I was black in the hair, which I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna try to avoid it, because I don't want the hair to stand out too much. I would black around here, top of the ear, and then black all this shadow, because obviously there's loads of shadow here, but I'm not putting in the black, so that is automatically making defining the ear a bit more tricky. Yeah, that's good. And there, just to just get the earring and that defined. Okay, that is it. Well, fucking hell. I don't know how long, let's take this out. I don't know how long this video has been. It feels like a long time. I mean, like I said earlier on, I've been painting this one out for about two weeks. So let's bring the camera out. So there he is, she is. Um, I'll take f real photographs of this. <sighs> oh no. I said I was finished and I spotted a little bit I'm not happy with. Do you need to see me touch a little bit of white? Well, you're gonna, and then I'm gonna do any other touching up off camera because come on. There we go, just a little bit of white in there. There you have it. Okay, well, a Taylor Swift painting painted in real time. You've seen it all from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I'm not looking at this too much, but you know, you if you've got this far, you are a bit of a trooper. I'll um, get the real photographs of this painting done, and I will show you them now. Uh, please visit my website. This painting will, will be for sale. There'll be prints of it, all that type of jazz. Thank you for watching, subscribe. Well done for making this far. This far. Um, I'm wishing my future Steve, who's editing this, good luck. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. Bye, look at the camera.